welcome to the lecture on dairy cow feeding right so by no means is this an advanced course in dairy cow nutrition right? so i'm not calling it uh, dairy cow nutrition i'm instead calling it dairy cow feeding right? so I'm, I'm going through the basics right um so you definitely need to upgrade your knowledge if you want to become uh, and you know uh, uh, an advanced nutritionist of any any kind right um, so you see for dairy to be successful you know you can't have just high genetics or uh, high fertility you know or the government policy alone right so these these won't uh, make success unless they are working together right so that is really important genetics alone fertility alone uh, you know however much money you have to set up the best dairy infrastructure or milking parlor is not going to make it successful unless there is a good coordination and all of these click together right so that is when you will have success but however even if one of these stops right then dairy uh, basically cannot be made successful and currently it is the feeding sector in Sri Lanka that I think is um, you know rate limiting step I mean it's not like uh, not turning at all but it's very limited from in both in quantity and quality unfortunately right, so we so far we have um, talked about feeding at the level of pre vena calves vena calves or heifers pregnant heifers fresh cows um, Right, so and like up to up to this level, I suppose we have talked about. Right, so um, um, so today we will talk about adult animals also, um, including pregnancy. Uh, we did talk about pregnancy nutrition requirements a little bit for heifers, but for cows and then the lactation is the main difference here. Um, and so on we will go into a little bit more detail right so like I said earlier nutrition really is very advanced right um, almost like this right but for the purpose of this lecture we are going to keep it really simple and we are going to mainly uh, you know start off with some very basic principles right uh, the first of which, uh, which I'm going to call the GIGO principle. I, I don't know if you've heard of this. Whether it's feeding or anything else, right? There is, um, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. So, in the sense of nutrition or feeding, if you eat garbage food, so the example shown here is all high uh, carbohydrate based diet right without any exercise you know garbage in garbage out is what you get right um, so whether it's humans or dairy animals it's not different if you give a low quality feed you are going to get a low quality output in the form of milk uh, both quantity and quality right so on the other hand the second principle if you as a human being if you eat a healthy diet a value well diet value in value out right and you put in a lot of exercise you get you put in value and you get value out right so same with dairy animals you give a high quality feed you get a high quality output of milk in terms of um, quality and quantity right 
So like I said, uh, a real value feed should have all of these components properly balanced, right? Energy, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, fiber, etc., etc. But in the Sri Lankan scenario, um, because uh, more, the majority of animals are, you know, we are, we are, we are dealing with, uh, you know, less than 20 liters or whatever uh, daily meat production, right? Not in the 40, 50 liter per day range. The major, major deficiency that we have observed is in energy. Right? It's not the fats or the vitamins or the minerals, right? So a lot of people uh, talk about bypass fats and so on, right? But bypass fats become a necessity only when animals are high producers, right? Um, for the regular animals that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, 15 to 20 liter animal, 10 to 10, 15, 20 liter animal, uh, you really don't have to worry about these a lot, right? Any diet is going to have vitamins, minerals, you know, proteins, uh, and you know, you 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 will see uh, during the lectures notes that protein requirement etc. go up when the uh, daily milk production goes up, right? So we are going to focus on energy only. However, I don't advise you to focus on energy only when you are really doing it in the field situation. Um, you have to look at the other components, other ingredients as well, right? But for the purpose of this lecture, we are going to focus on energy only because that is the major deficiency in the Sri Lankan scenario. Right. So before we talk about cattle energy requirements, do we know what our energy requirements are so how many of you know what your daily caloric or energy requirement is right so take a pause uh, and think about that right um okay so i couldn't find a sri lankan example um so what i'm going to present here is a european diet right so here's a high calorie, um, unhealthy diet, right? Sounds delicious, right? Egg and bacon muffin, iced coffee, low fat iced coffee, in fact, right? Uh, large latte, burger, fries, chocolate bar. See how much chocolate bar has? Right, so sounds delicious, but it's got 16,300 kilojoules, right? Uh, which is twice as much as we need. And then here's a low calorie, uh, healthy diet. High fiber breakfast cereal, right? Fruit, toast, coffee with low fat milk. Um, you know, whole meal sandwich with lean meat and so on, right? Um, so that is a low calorie healthy diet. See, that comes to 8,700 kilojoules, which is, you know, in megajoules, 8.7 megajoules, right? And, uh, so you need we, we usually talk about uh, in calories as right? so a different countries talk about different um, units as you know right but when it comes to humans we usually talk about in calories right so do your uh, take uh, ho homework right um, find out how many calories or kilocalories this is and that is our general um, Caloric, daily caloric requirement you need to know, right? So you need to know uh, what the because from a public health uh, angle, right? So one of the jobs of the veterinarian is you know food supply, uh, milk, eggs, right? Milk products, meat products. So so one of the the duties of a veterinarian, the roles of a veterinarian, is that therefore the veterinarian needs to know. Uh, human beings 
daily caloric requirements right not for your own self but for the purpose of veterinary public health right so this is important uh, in another sense that is why I converted it into mega joules right? so remember this number huh? remember this number um, you know say, say something like 8 mega joules 8 9 mega joules for a 70 uh, kilogram human being right? or 60 to 70 kilogram human being just remember this huh? and we will we, we'll see why that is important from a dairy point of view right um, so like I said we have talked about these different ones and we will be starting with the lactating cow today right? which is you know essentially here after calving right so uh, calf energy requirements remember uh, it was dependent on the body weight obviously average daily gain because animals growing at a slower growth rate will have a different uh, energy requirement than animals going at a higher growth rate right so there was a maintenance energy MEM metabolizable energy of maintenance and then there was metabolizable energy of growth right so depending on the growth rate see faster growing animal double the speed 400 gram double the requirement right same here 200 grams 1.8 400 grams 4.1 and so on right so the total energy requirement is the uh, addition of maintenance energy and metabolizable energy for growth right so that is that was for calves right so that's that's all they do maintenance regular maintenance functions and growth functions right um, so note note the ratios here initially uh, maintenance is you know th three times as much as growth right but eventually they catch up right they almost the same maintenance is the same as growth energy and there were all these uh, complex formulas that we talked about right so you you should if you are given these figures right you should be able to work out um, these formulas or uh, you can get them at an exam exam right so don't forget that don't ignore them so this was for slightly larger calves so here up to 45 kilograms 80 kilograms right so uh, those things again depends on the growth rate 250 grams per day growth up to 1 kilo per gram uh, kilogram growth per day and so on right I'm just giving this to refresh your memories we've already done this right and then we talked about heifer feed requirements right again heifers are also growing and maintenance so maintenance energy growth energy right um, right so maintenance growth and again different protein requirements note that the protein requirement gradually goes down right see their growth also goes down gradually and see uh, energy requirement also goes down right as the system becomes more efficient right and then we talked about energy requirements for pregnancy for heifers uh, because they will eventually get pregnant and that's the whole idea so uh, initially energy requirements for pregnancy are minimal uh, because embryo fetus is small later on later on these are uh, due date and these are weeks before calving uh, so this is about three months before calving two months before calving right um, so this is not in calorie this chart shows in kilograms dry matter extra kilograms dry matter uh, the heifers need for pregnancy right so assuming it's 11 megajoules per me diet right so two months before calving the animal needs about you know 20 extra megajoules for pregnancy i'm sorry about 11 extra megajoules and 
you know like two weeks before carving it goes up to you know 20 megajoules maybe here something like 25 megajoules a day right extra in addition to this maintenance and growth right so uh, if this animal was pregnant uh, non-pregnant right the total energy requirement for this animal is 102 but if the animal was pregnant and you know ready to carve uh, tomorrow right so the animal's energy requirement is that 102 plus 11 times 3 33 135 you know something along those lines right so that you need to understand so this is also a very important number to remember right <clears throat> right okay so for calves we said it was growth and uh, maintenance for pregnant heifer calves you add pregnancy onto that right so on top of that do calves cows uh, cows cows meaning they, they have already calved and they're lactating what other energy requirements do they have right so first of all maintenance obviously right um, so I mean you don't have to know these figures by memory right because you can always if you have to do this calculation at the farm level you can do a brief calculation you can just read your refer to your you know, dairy bible or whatever and you can get the exact value right but for the purpose of you know examinations and your knowledge you just need to know uh, they are approximately the maintenance energy is approximately 11 percent of the body weight uh, maintenance energy in megajoules right per day is approximately 11 percent of the body weight see uh, 11 percent of 400 would be 44 11 percent of 500 would be 55 right so 11 percent of 600 would be 66 so as the animal becomes larger uh, it shifts from 11 percent to 10 percent right but when they are smaller see 300 12 percent is 36 200 13 percent is 26 right 100 17 percent right but for the animals that we deal with uh, so uh, in the Sri Lankan situation maybe you will have a 350 kilogram or 400 kilogram jersey smallest size largest size would be uh, on Beverly New Zealand farm you will have this 600 plus right but generally 550 or less right so from 350 to 550 approximately 11 percent if you remember that you know in the field level at the field level you can do a quick calculation and uh, you know in your head and uh, calculate the energy requirement of a cow right so that that is the idea here so please disregard this column right uh, we are going to focus on this column uh, me requirement right but be aware that there is such a system as well where you can uh, calculate total digestible nutrients as well right right um, so for heifers remember we said um, um, so last month right energy requirement was something like uh, so last month right energy requirement was something like along the lines of 20 megajoules so 1.7 kg is like 20 at the rate of 11 per kilogram right 20 to 35 as of the due date right but for um, cows we say during the last month it's 20 you know throughout but of course it will increase towards parturition because the fetus obviously gets larger right so before the sixth month <clears throat> you know again this will slightly change depending on the textbook you refer to and depending on the region the data comes from 
depending on the breed, right? So there, there won't be a universal standard for breed and climate and management system and all. Remember, all these animals, although they are Frisians, you can these Frisians have been, you know, different lines, right? Family lines. The ones that are bred in Australia, the ones from the US, the U European ones, right? They may not necessarily have, uh, you know, genetic, immediate genetic relationships, right? They've been selected and bred for different purposes and they will have different uh, uh, requirements also based on how they have been selectively bred, right? And so another book you read may say for fifth month, you need six megajoules per day right right so basically if it's a if it's in the seventh month of gestation in addition to this uh, growth and milk and all that you have to add 10 megajoules per day for its pregnancy right if it's on the ninth month ninth month you have to add 20 megajoules per day basically right right and obviously uh, the major difference between the heifer and the cow is that the cow is lactating, right? Um, so therefore, you have to add the energy requirement for milk. And so something to note here is, again, there is no universal figure. Right? This depends on the composition of milk, protein percentage and fat percentage, right? So the lower the fat and protein the lower the energy requirement the higher the protein and fat the higher the energy requirement right so therefore for milk production per liter right megajoules per metabolizable energy uh, megajoules of metabolizable energy per liter of milk right can range from 4.5 all the way to 7 right but the general milk that we encounter, you already know the protein percentage. Remember, we said uh, 3.27, 3.33, 3.4 protein, right? Whole infusion milk. And then somewhere around this for fat, right? So this is the kind of energy required for uh, per liter of milk in the Sri Lankan situation. But if there are jerseys with higher protein and fat, right you might be dealing with about six right? so really high quality jerseys or certain other breeds with high fat and protein the energy requirement might be as high as seven right? so if you so far right if you can remember 11 percent for metabolizable energy uh, maintenance energy and these numbers for pregnancy and you know forget 5.2 just remember 5 for Frisian and 6 for Jersey uh, in the field situation you should be able to do a fairly accurate energy calculation right and um, of course we, we, we've talked about the you know the body condition score you know the loss and the gains during the late lactation um, so you have to factor that in as well so we said ideally a uh, cow should not lose more than 0.5 right of body condition and uh, we also talked about how much of a back fat thickness and of what percentage of the body uh, the body weight is equal to one condition score right which was eight percent so if an animal loses one body condition score right that is about eight percent of its weight animal loses only 0.5 under the ideal situation then that is four percent of the body weight right so again for that group of animals that we are concerned uh, 400 to 550 kilos the animals that we deal with usually uh, one body condition score comes to exactly about eight percent of the body weight right but then you have to calculate further right so that 44 kilograms of fat how much energy was that actually right 
So this is the energy available from one kilogram of weight loss, right? So basically, if the cow mobilizes one kilogram of body fat, that body fat gives the animal 28 megajoules of metabolizable energy. So if an animal loses, if a 550 kilogram animal loses 0.5 condition score, that means that is 22 kilos, right? So the total energy the animal got from losing that 22 kilos is 22 times 28 megajoules. Uh, I don't know what that is, something like 600 megajoules of energy, right? So that is what the animal uh, loses, right, in terms of kilos and, you know, mobilizes for its use in terms of megajoules, right, 600 megajoules, let's say, during early lactation. But then during late lactation or dry period, the animal uh will be able to will be will gain that body condition back as we discussed earlier right but note here to gain one kilogram of that lost body weight or fat here now the animal has to spend 44 megajoules of metabolizable energy so here animal during early lactation only got 28 from each kilo but now animal has to spend 44 to get that one kilo right so for each kilogram the animal loses of body fat animal loses 16 megajoules of energy right because this, this, this is the basic fundamental law in the world um, so this is the input this is the output you know, however efficient a machine is, it can never reach 100% efficiency. That is what is shown here, right? So, in, for this machine, if you give 44, you only get out 28, right? So, the, the more body condition score you lose, the more body weight the animal loses, the more body condition the animal loses, the more energy 16 times per each kilo you know, the, the animal loses and the farmer loses in profitability, right? So, let's say uh, animal loses 40 kilograms, right? So, 40 kilograms times 16, uh, that's uh, 40 times 16, 600 megajoules lost in the equation to thin air, right? So, basically, farmer has lost that uh, body energy because of the loss of body conditions. So that is why we say you should keep it minimal. And so if the condition loss is minimal, this loss, 16 times number of kilos, is lower. right? Therefore, the loss to the farmer in terms of economics is lower. Right? So here's another place where you can uh, tap that. Right? So it has been shown that to gain body weight during dry period, right, you the animal has to spend more energy, even more than late lactation, right. So if, of course, from a management point of view, it's a lot easier to gain body condition score during the dry period, because animal is not lactating. So whatever extra feed you give, will go towards uh, replenishing that lost body weight, right. But however, look at the difference here. Now you are losing 27 megajoules per each kilo, right? So that is why uh, we say by the time of drying off, you have to gain that body condition score of 3.25 or 3.5. So that way you save another 11 megajoules of metabolizable energy per kilo of body weight loss, right? So I, I hope this is clear. So do spend some more time to understand this. Right? So this that that out really outlines why we should to minimize we should minimize loss of body condition score, and then why we should try our best to gain it during the late lactation period. Right. Um, so like I said earlier, right. So different books give uh, different slightly different numbers, right. Um, and um, 
different perspectives on this right so uh, so these uh, previous one was also from australia these also from australia but two different authors they are all both johns right first one was john moran this one is jo john house right i have personally worked with both of them um, so according to john house's book uh, professor john house of the university of sydney um, so he has simplified this a lot more so he says um, 60 megajoules for a 500 kilogram body weight animal and then plus or minus 5 megajoules for every 50 kilogram change so he simplifies this for host infusions 5 megajoules for jersey cows 6 megajoules so there's a slight difference here big difference in fact the previous guide said yes you get 20 megajoules from each uh, loss of each kilo but that said uh, 44 to re regain it during late lactation and 55 during the dry period but this says you know 34 right um, so pregnancy uh, the previous guy also had similar numbers from six months onwards but John House's book uh, refers to extra energy from the five fifth month onwards so this is important uh, how much energy is required for exercise so obviously animal that is not walking versus animal walking on flat sloping down or hilly land you know you have to allocate energy for that right so it's not going to be the same energy for the stationary animal versus animals walking significant distances right so you have to factor that in right so you have to have maintenance milk production pregnancy body condition loss or gain and exercise right so these are the five aspects you have to consider and in addition to this right so we said uh, dairy animals reach mature body weight during the third parity right um, so if this is a you know first parity animal or second parity animal right animal in first lactation in addition to this you need to add one extra thing what is that growth animal is still growing right so you need to add that also right um, so this is what i mentioned about proteins earlier right so you the the protein composition right percentage has to increase when the lactation daily lactation increases right so that's why i said the animals that we deal with 10 to 20 liters or even less than 10 liters per day production their protein requirement is relatively low and therefore it will get automatically balanced by the diet you give because any diet has protein right so unless you give very poor quality straw based diet only which is poor in protein then of course the animal will be protein deficient but if you give a fairly you know high quality diet including uh, concentrate feed the animal will get some proteins from that right so uh, but if it goes towards this level then obviously you have to think of supplementing in different ways right and so like i said these values will depend on the breed the body weight the climate the family line purposes of selective breeding and so on and so forth right so um, you know so this is a typical um cow ear right <clears throat> let's assume this is the calving point and the maximum milk yield is 15 right so it's dried off in 305 days 60 day dry period um, so typical milk curve you know starting at 5 finishing at around 3 when it's dried off maximum 15 liters you know during the second month right so remember so this is important to remember the maintenance energy regardless of milk production is the same right so, uh, so if I ask you what is the approximate weight of this animal what is your answer the maintenance energy requirement is 50 what is the body weight of this animal should be around 450 right 450 times 11 percent will comes to will come to about 50 right so it's a 450 kilogram animal 
right so what is the milk energy requirement for milk metabolizable energy requirement for milk so if you assume uh, they are going to average these amounts right so averaging 10 liters this month right 50 megajoules per day at the point of 15 liter production 15 times 5 75 14 liters 13 liters 11 liters 10 liters 8 liters 6 liters 5 4 and finally drying off right um, so i'm assuming 5 megajoules of metabolizable energy per liter of milk and then for pregnancy um, so we are adding energy from the fifth month onward but remember this is just not gestation and this is lactation typically animal becomes pregnant after the second month so this will actually be the uh, first month of lactation right so uh, in around three months let's assume animal becomes pregnant in three months so first month of pregnancy second month third month fourth month fifth month right? that's when we start adding six seven eight nine right so that's when animal requires as much as 20 megajoules per day for the pregnancy right and if you add those up right so that's a fetus getting larger and larger requiring more and more energy so you add them up this is these are the kind of numbers you are going to get right so um, that's about the highest for a 15 liter animal right? but of course uh, if it produces 10 extra liters uh, 10 liters would be around 50 megajoules so this becomes 175 right if it's a 30 liter animal uh, that's another extra 75 megajoules this becomes 200 right okay right um, so right now let's sorry about this animation mishap right so now let's say you're feeding this animal animal in third month of lactation 120 megajoules right? that is its requirement uh, 50 goes for maintenance 70 goes for milk right um, so although in theory animal consumed 5 megajoules per liter of milk right? that's how you get 70 14 times 5 right uh, uh, if you do if you consider all of energy all the energy that the animal consumed right so 120 is what the animal consumed you divide 120 by 14 this is what you get right so although in reality it consumed it uh, consumed only 5 megajoules per liter um, you know this 50 also goes into milk what else does it go right um, right so that if you for the from an economic point of view the farmer has fed 120 megajoules and he gets out 14 liters so he is essentially spending 8.5 megajoules per liter of milk right now assume you only fed 80 megajoules right? so if you fed only 80 megajoules do you think animal will consume less for maintenance no right so that is a that is a fundamental requirement of the animal for its regular functions right so whether you lie down in bed all day you watch tv all day on your couch or you exercise uh, or you go to work uh, or you do whatever right your maintenance is always there all these metabolic functions inside um, oxidative phosphorylation digestion right all those are maintenance functions right so they need this 50 megajoules whether you feed them 50 60 80 100 200 this is what they will use for maintenance so this leaves out only 30 for milk production right so this is a non-pregnant animal and can the animal produce 14 liters of milk from 30 megajoules no it can't it will only produce 6 megajoules so what happens now the farmer has fed 80 megajoules animal has given 6 liters of milk 
and suddenly milk becomes expensive right so divide 80 divided by 6 this is what you get so the high producing animal farmer only had to spend 8.5 megajoule per liter right but the low producing animal farm had to spend 13.5 megajoule of feed per liter of milk so this is why uh, uh, cost of production is lower with high producing animals okay right, so this you really need to understand if the animal has potential to give more milk the more milk you get the more profitable it will be for the farm right so we see typical example of a garbage diet giving a garbage result right expensive milk right so now you know what is a value feed in terms of energy you know what is a garbage feed but how do you know if you are actually feeding 120 or 80 megajoules okay that is a big question right uh, okay in order to understand that uh, let's do some calculations and see okay so assume a 550 kilogram cow no activity which means no which means no exercise right remember we talked about energy requirements for exercise flat sloping or hilly land one three or five megajoules per kilometer right so you don't have to worry about that because it's a animal that doesn't exercise sixth month of pregnancy uh, which means it consumes about um, eight megajoules per day producing 13 liters of milk right containing this much okay so calculate how much energy the animal needs refer to the tables from john moran Right, so you should get. Uh, I hope you've done the calculation. You should get 59 here for maintenance, no exercise, one month after calving, non pregnant, producing 20 liters, which is something like 5.1 megajoules per liter. Uh, so 5.1 times 20 is 102, right, for milk. 102 plus uh, 59, 161 right and then it is losing 500 grams of live weight per day right so we know from one kilogram the animal gets 28 megajoules of energy and now from 500 grams it gets 14 so the question here is what do you do to the 14 right do you add it to this 161 or do you subtract it from the 161 what do you think i'm going to let you think about that right actually the answer is there somewhere um right so you can you can figure it out okay so now that was an example of an animal in early lactation right non-pregnant losing weight here is an example of an animal in late lactation seventh month of pregnancy relatively low milk production and now the animal is gaining body weight right okay so go ahead and do your calculation and see what you get and pause the video please okay so you should get this answer if you did it right i said the textbook for some reason they didn't have 10 here for pregnancy so I added that right so you should get this answer right now you know you need 142 and then your question is how do you feed this 142 so to do that you need to know the what we call feed values right feed values for different types of ingredients right so here uh, yeah, sure, I've taken it from you know Victoria 
Australia website right so feed values remember you can refer to this site or any other reliable site you find on the web right and so some different uh, energy values here see rye grass we find this in our Beverly New Zealand farms 12 percent uh, I'm sorry 12 megajoules per kilogram of metabolizable energy and 11 percent crude protein that's quite a good diet in that one also right uh, these are some figures the VRI has obtained um, from their studies right I find this number a little difficult to believe guinea grass has that much I doubt it but you know they have this is what they have found experimentally so we have to believe that right so generally we say guinea grass is a low quality uh, type of forage Right, we always thought it had less than this, maybe five or six megajoules uh, per kilogram, dry matter kilogram. But this is what they have found experimentally, right? So you don't need to memorize all these, right? But you have to have a rough idea, and especially if you are a field veterinarian. I mean, they are not going to in your area, you know, they will give a limited limited number of ingredients, right? Um, so if your area uses rye grass, you have to know by heart uh, what these numbers are. If they feed CO3 or CO4, these are the numbers, right? If they feed maize, these are the numbers. I mean, even if you have to memorize all of these, can't be too difficult. 15 ingredients, right? If you can't memorize these 15 ingredients, what's the point of being a veterinarian, being a dairy veterinarian, right? So. Um, I mean the main things you need to remember understand is that you know something like paddy straw is poor in both energy and crude protein right um, so some of these numbers you know are not what we see in international books for example maize or corn uh, you know we see up to 13 or 15 megajoules in international uh, publications right but Unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, these are the numbers the VRI has obtained, right, 10 to 11. Uh, so, dal dust, see, poor in energy, high in protein, we say pariku, huh? high protein diet, anyway. Right, so some of these numbers uh, don't match with what we see internationally, right. So, uh, here's an example here, maize, 15 versus, uh, you know, 10 that we got, 10 and 7. 15 and 9 see high quality maize versus low quality maize right so this could be a laboratory error or this could be really poor quality maize because the soil wasn't fertile weather wasn't good there was no water maturity is too much etc etc right but high quality maize is supposed to have these kinds of numbers right so see these are some cereal grains right so we have in Sri Lanka sorghum rice right um so oil cakes right so we don't have these but we have punak coconut punak is belongs to this group of oil cakes right so coconut punak you can expect to be something like this, this punak here i don't remember punak here that is punak right so 10 and 19 see high protein uh, um, so similar numbers here but you know higher energy here right but a lot more proteins here uh, that's the idea right so now look at fish meal obviously we don't use fish meal in dairy feed formulation but it's um, used in poultry feed formulation very uh, source of high protein right so just have an idea right so um, byproducts here's one that we use the rice polishings here has 14 and 11 but rice polishings here and 6 and 12 right so these that maybe you have heard on the TV news that we export the high quality product and uh, what we keep in the local market is the low quality product maybe that is the reason for these uh, you know uh, poor numbers right 
so this is right so if you were to get all these figures you know these in, in conventionally right it was a huge process right uh, all these bomb calorimeter keldal method for protein etc etc that you may have heard of right but in the modern day there's this equipment called near infrared spectrophotometer right so you would have heard of spectrophotometry in biochemistry and virology etc etc right that we use for diagnostic purposes and you know quantitative diagnosis quantitative quantifying uh, various things right so it's the same technology that is used here so spectrophotometry meaning spectrum uh, wavelength uh, that's what it's using so please do read about this and have an idea basic idea on what they do and how they give these uh, values so basically uh, with the really modern advanced NIRSS you can just you know push them against a pile of feed and it's going to give you a printout of uh, the ingredients composition the feed has uh, that really is amazing however it is not as um, you know a, a rosy bed as it sounds uh, there are some challenges to this you need to calibrate it to the type of feed you're testing and so on and so forth nevertheless the simple fact that such a thing exists is amazing and uh, you know you need to know as a dairy veterinarian even if you haven't seen one or used one right now um, you know very theoretical calculations you remember going back to that 142 megajoules per day see how you can feed this 142 using different combinations of foragers and concentrate right uh, so for example think i just said i just put prima uh, it doesn't have to be prima it can be cic it can be super feeds you know the various brands of concentrate pellet feed see how you can balance this up right so do remember this just getting this hundred balancing out the energy like this is not sufficient you in the real situation you have to look at the cost effectiveness you have to look at these different aspects that i mentioned here right uh, and so on and so forth but here we are doing a very simple highly theoretical calculation right so don't don't forget that right okay so in this example right i wanted you to use six kilograms of concentrate right uh, right now I, I want you to do a different calculation here so here i'm asking you to give 108 of the energy from concentrate and see if you can fill in the blanks and see if you can appreciate the difference between this versus this and then which option would you prefer right? so think about that for a minute right so I, in addition to this i have also given uh, a more advanced questions in your pre lecture questions right so please do uh, attend to those uh, before you come for the lecture discussion right okay right so uh, going back to some basics that we talked about previously remember the three volatile fatty acids acetic propionate and butric right um, and uh, so we did talk about this um, acetic acid mainly comes from roughages and propionate and butyrate mainly comes from concentrate right um, and um, so there is a recommended range ratio between forage to concentrates right so see what happens when you change these right right um, so see what happens huh? so if you when you have high forage ratio 80 foragers 20 percent concentrate you are going to have obviously high acetic acid production and low propionic acid production right so high acetic acid is going to give you 
a high fat percentage right so remember what we talked about propionic acid goes into the liver and becomes glucose gluconeogenesis goes into the udder and becomes lactose lactose has the property of high osmolarity which draws in water which helps increase the volume of milk so we, we talked about the opposite for drying off right we cut down concentrates so propionic acid goes down glucose goes down lactose goes down osmolarity goes down volume goes down right so here as we increase the proportion of concentrate from 20 to 40 to 60 to 80 obviously propionic acid is going to go up right and when you do that because the forage comes down acetic acid is going to come down right um, so up to a certain point uh, so up to a certain point about here right close to 40 to 60 ratio up to a certain point milk quality goes up right high volume here and then fat is also relatively decently high right but when the forage base falls down after a certain point less than 40 percent see the fat percentage suddenly drops so when fat percentage suddenly drops uh, the quality of the milk goes down right and uh, the farmer gets a poor price for milk as you would know in Sri Lanka uh, milk is paid for by the fat percentage and SNF right uh, solids non-fat right so when the fat percentage goes down the solid uh, the fat percentage goes down and farmer gets a poor price right so that is why you need to if you are here then your volume is low you have high fat but low volume right but you want to come to this optimum range somewhere around here which is between 40 and 60 percent right so that is where you will have the highest volume and highest fat percentage and therefore highest value for your mon uh, milk right from economic standpoint so do read this some basic stuff but these are the fundamental you need to understand you can't go on giving more concentrate so we have come across with farmers they say sir i'm getting such a you know my animal is giving me 40 liters right but the water milk is like water the milk collector says i adulterate i add water to the milk no sir i don't add water to the milk however i'm getting a very poor price what's going wrong you know i tried to give more concentrates but it didn't fix the problem right so that is the that is the fundamental problem here so farmer doesn't know all this so he thinks he can fix this by giving more concentrate do you think that is the correct option or not that is not the correct option so what is the correct option what do you have to actually give here more concentrates or or more forages right so think about that okay right um, so like I said let's read up think about this right okay so these are some basic things I'm going to speed through these right so these are the quality of a forage right from uh, active green growth to relatively uh, flowering and maturing into you know basically straw see how the digestibility goes down see how the energy goes down right so this is important because to determine optimum time of harvest right so optimum time of harvest if you harvest here yes digestibility is high highest energy is highest however the yield is lower because there's still potential for growth right if you harvest here yield is maximum however digestibility is low energy is low right so sometimes i've seen farmers say sir i gave enough and more to the animal look at the size of the room and it's huge it's huge it can't eat anymore yet it's not giving me enough milk so why is that it's to do with this uh, so they give dry uh, mature forages 
poor energy, poor digestibility, and he expects a high quality product. In product, no, he won't get because that's almost a garbage feed, garbage out. Huh? Right. So read this and understand what this is. Right. So we've been talking about energy mainly, but like I said, I've been repeatedly saying there are other things to consider. Right. You need to know about those. Right. So see milk production affected by quality. See full bloom, full bloom, mid bloom early bloom pre bloom right so like i said milk highest is with pre bloom but however yield will be lower so go through this right okay so this is little important please pause the video and try to understand this i will take this up at the uh, discussion and i will also you will probably get an exam question also right so it will take a couple of minutes, but spend that time and try to understand what I'm trying to show here. Right, so once you go through and come up with your answer, read this and see if what you thought was correct. Right, so a common practice in Sri Lanka is a lot of farmers or veterinarians are unaware of the ME calculations. Right? So they go uh, uh, with the dry matter intake as a percentage of body weight right uh, this is not entirely correct because like i said you know feeding four percent of this diet versus this forage the difference is like black and white right so you say you can say okay i fed four percent right but feeding four percent of this and this is uh, dramatically different right so that is why we can't recommend to go with this alone right however for a, a decent quality diet that is all right right and you can't just go with this you have to look at the quality of the feed as well but uh, if you if you are giving the same ration for example a TMR total mix ration um, you know this is how it should change right by the fifth week uh, you have to the animal has to be eating uh, you know peak levels uh, maybe 2.5 percent of the body weight dry matter intake at the beginning of lactation gradually goes up to 4 percent right so just have a rough idea and it can even go beyond 4 percent right see right, so, so go through this table uh, and try to understand the differences for different body weight categories and different production levels right, so this is what I talked about earlier so these are really you know fundamentals the feed pyramid right um, so remember the the base is formed by physical fibers foragers right um, not not these not minerals not vitamins not bypass fat not bypass protein Right, so marketers try to promote these things. Um, no point giving these things if you don't have your base right. Right, uh, so look at this basic ration with high quality foragers, bottom three sections one, two, three should be able to support 75 pounds of milk per day, and that is like 35 liters of milk per day. Right. Fats, bypass proteins, and feed additives become important only for higher producing animals, right? So remember the basics in Sri Lanka. Like I said, we are talking about 15 to 20 liter animal. You know, don't, don't no need to bother with this, right? Provided that these are balanced, right? Okay, so you know, 90% of 87% of milk is water 12 to 13% solid so water is really important more water means more milk right so a lot of our farmers don't give sufficient water to animals so these are some really basics i'm not going to go through those but you need to know how much water an animal consumes just giving uh, ad lib water is not the solution you need to know the real water requirements Right. So I've given some notes on, you know, early lactation, nutrition, 
uh, mid lactation uh, to late lactation and you know dry period that we've all talked about but these are really simple basics so I don't, I'm not going to spend time on those but please do go through these slides and educate yourselves right so these are some important things particle size right and so on um, so we, we bring these up at the exam uh, I'm sorry at the lecture discussion and we will talk about those okay guys that is all for the feeding lectures right like I said this is by no means a comprehensive guide on feeding or nutrition of dairy cows just the basic guide to get you started right but now if you know these fundamentals properly you know you can expand your knowledge as and when needed depending on what you are going to specialize on right if you are a dairy guy you know your main job is dairy veterinarian then of course this knowledge will not be sufficient but this will serve as a good uh, base for you to self-learn and expand your knowledge okay guys thank you very much have a good day